just thought I'd do a little video here of my favorite 1911 out of all the 1911s I've ever owned. And um, probably, in my opinion, the best one. It's a Sig Sauer, I guess, the Emperor Scorpion. I've uh, made a few changes to it. I love the external extractor. I've actually tried this gun with, um, I think, three different barrels in it. I've never had a single malfunction with this gun, ever. Which I know people say is impossible with a 1911, but it's not impossible with this one. Actually, it's interesting. There you can see where I um, snapped off an Allen wrench, apparently, when I was putting on <laughs> these grip screws. I don't plan on taking it off anytime soon, so I just left it alone. Um, but anyways, you can see the sights. Um, I was, um, I was looking at an auto ordinance, um, stainless steel 1911 a while back at this big gun shop over in Daytona beach and they had the sights and, um, I really liked them. I forget now the name of the company. If it was, I don't think it was, um, it wasn't Ameriglow, um, Maybe I'll have to look that up and put it in the description for this video. I meant to do that before I started filming because it slipped my mind. And um, But it had like a, a white dot outline on the front. And the gunsmith I took it to, he said um, it was you know a little bit short. And like on the sights on that SIG, they had that little roll pin to hold them into the slide. And it didn't really fit on there. So I tried it out with just the rear sight and with the original front sight on there that it came with. And um, it shot pretty good to point of aim. Um, I'd like that U-notch though. And then I figured, you know, have like where you can hook that for one-handed, you know, manipulations and stuff. But this is an Ed Brown sight, which I think is basically just like a Trigicon XD that's made for him for the 1911s. And I looked at that found it on Optics Planet or somewhere. And you see it has the roll pin and everything. It was very much the same size as the original sight. The roll pin didn't actually quite line up, so he didn't put that pin back in, but he's got it wedged in there and that dovetail tight enough, it's not going anywhere, you know. Um, you can see I've got a full length guide rod. The, um, you know, it originally comes with the, um, you know, standard GI style set up with only uh, you know it has like the flat wire you know recoil spring i replaced that with this wilson combat setup and it has a 20 pound spring on it 10-8 performance flat face trigger the main advantage of that even though i do like the flat face trigger is um it, there's absolutely no wiggle in it side to side i think it's a 10-8 performance slide stop too actually but you can see where i filed it all down Get rid of all the sharp edges on the front where your um, support thumb kind of rests under there. You know, so it doesn't scrape. And it's got all the serrations you need right up here to get a good purchase on it. I tried a couple of different um, thumb safeties in there too. I didn't really like the Ambi safety that first came with it. The little, um, you know, little chopped off levers. Not very comfortable. And I actually, right before I put this one in, I had a Wilson Combat Bulletproof Ambi. Oh, and my nosy cat is coming because she always comes over here anytime I'm near my computer and gets in the way. But I put in the single side <laughs> thumb safety, the Wilson Combat Bulletproof. Um, unlike the original one I did, this one dropped straight in and without any kind of problems at all. Oh, I'm going to have to get rid of my cat. Hold on. Okay, so I'm back. My cat's not very happy with me, but anytime I try to do anything on my computer over here, if I'm trying to do some writing or anything, she insists on coming over and crawling all over me, <laughs> which I suppose I should be thankful for that she loves her daddy. But um, as I was saying, this thumb safety um, dropped right in. Wilson Combat Bulletproof, just a single-sided safety, which I kind of prefer anyways. They're stronger, you know, than the Ambi ones. Um, I had to actually fit 
the one followed a little bit when I had the Ambi one. I was kind of surprised this one dropped right in. These grips are, um, I think, VZ grips. I think it's a dirty hyena color. And um, I got it without the scoop there for your thumb. This, um, I had a couple of different uh, magwells that I tried on here too, including a, you know, a Nighthawk custom one, which just um, didn't work that well compared to what I remembered it on another pistol I'd used one on. And this was actually kind of a cheaper one that I found on eBay. I guess it's an aluminum mainspring housing. And um, it's a two-piece design, but it's really solid and it fits really well nice funnel on there um, let me drop the slide here which I'm going to try and do without just hitting the slide release <laughs> let's see what I can do here holding the phone under my chin I don't know how that looked you can see though how well this um, how well this works um, I especially like the fact that you know you try to move the slide back and it's just the you know, the, the thumb safety doesn't move up or down it's very precisely fitted um, so this is pretty much my ultimate um, 1911 I've ever had I, uh, it shoots you know it's a point of aim very precise the one thing i did do um, this thumb safety when i first got it you really had to make sure it was pushed in every single bit of the way to let that trigger come back and i am um, did a little bit of filing on that um, so you only have to push it in about halfway really before it'll let the trigger come back so if you get a quick grip on it with your thumb on top of the safety you know, it's going to go ahead and um, let you fire the gun. And um, use a wide variety of different magazines with it. This one here, I think, is a Wilson 47D with just an extended base pad. I've got the uh, you know, Chip McCormick Power Mags. I really wanted to try some of those new railed ones. You know, with the supposedly stronger feed lips, which I haven't got around to. This is just, you know, a 10 round um, Chip McCormick. I think I've got it loaded right now with these 185 grain barns, you know, solid copper hollow points. And I found this um, holster on um, eBay. Pretty, um, pretty inexpensive. I forget the name of the holster company now, MD Holsters or something like that. Let me stick this in here. But I have these holsters for a couple different guns. Uh, you can see, hold it upside down, it's not going anywhere. So this is the setup that I actually carry. Um, I know some people say a, a full-size 1911 steel frame gun is you know, not something really good for concealed carry, but I do it. A lot of people, of course, prefer an inside the waistband or appendix carry for me. This holster, you know, it fits really flush to your body and keeps the butt tucked in pretty good. So, anyways, there you have it. It's a um, really awesome, awesome 1911. I thought about changing some of the fire control parts, like an EGW kit or something, or a 10-8 performance hammer and all that. But especially with the way that um, thumb safety fits so precisely with the parts that are in there right now and everything works, I figured why screw with it.